This week in Nerf, we've got blaster leaks, books, and flywheel parts. I'm Jangler, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right into it, let's talk about one of the two blaster leaks we have this week. Uh, this one is actually something that has kind of been floating around for a while now, but I haven't been talking about, and that's the Modulus Long Strike. Now, the reason I've been talking about this is because it was on Nerf Perks for quite a while, and I've been getting a number of messages and comments about it, but I wanted to wait till we had an image of it, and now we do. So let's talk about this. Now, uh, recently there was a post about this with the image that went up on Facebook that has since been removed, at least I can't find it, so I'm not certain exactly who found it 100% certain, so my apologies on that, but... This is a modulus long strike. Now you'll see a couple different attachments on it, like the bipod and the scope is different, but these same nice lines that we have come to love in the long strike. It is such a cool looking blaster. Uh, now there's some things about it that people have noticed that are different from the current long strike model that we all have seen, the blue version, the old school end strike version. There is what looks to be potentially a jam release button and an extra screw port, I believe, someone found. So people are hoping that this is going to signify a internals update, which would be nice. I know a lot of people would love to see this be direct plunger, because a good performing long strike would be, oh, oh, it would be amazing. It would be just, it, people would love it. That's plain and simple. People would love it. So... Fingers crossed that that is the case. We don't have any way to confirm that that's the case. This is all just speculation. And uh, the fact that there are some differences in the shell does toward, uh, lean towards the fact that it is most likely real and not a Photoshop, not a, a paint job or anything like that at least. So I, I, I have no reason to not believe that this is likely the Modulus Longstrike or, or some version of what we will get in hopefully the near future since the Nerf Perks listing has been up for quite a while. So, fingers crossed, we'll see about that. But uh, until then, we're just going to have to live with this image and wonder and debate and contemplate on all the little details and people are going to continue to analyze this image and see what else they can find if anything. Regardless, it's an exciting thing and I'm looking forward to seeing it released hopefully by the end of the year. I could see it definitely being a, a holiday style blaster that's released as a surprise for the holiday season. So we'll see what happens with that. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. But there's one other leaked blaster. I, sh I suppose I should say two. But these were found by Mark Tang on Instagram and these are the Rival Hypnos uh, 191200. And these are what looks like an updated version of an Atlas. Uh, it's got that same kind of top loading mag style. It's a pump grip, which is nice. It definitely has that kind of chunky, bulky aesthetic the Atlas had. Hopefully this one only shoots one round rather than two. That would definitely be nice. I would not mind that at all because then you get 12 shots instead of six with the Atlas. Uh, now, if you've seen my Atlas video of gameplay with it, you know I was not the biggest fan of that top loading mechanism. Uh, it, it didn't feel as smooth as some other options. Now, it's still a bit better than the Zoo, so it's... It's a tough one for the rival line to get those long 12 round magazines to fit in something. But uh, regardless, this was found on Baidu and the image was posted up uh, through various social media places such as Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we don't know when these are gonna hit or if these are the final versions of them or not. We just know that this is something. If he didn't find the name for these, I would have actually thought that these would have been like uh, prototype Atlas models, potentially, but they do have some different things, like they actually use a stock point, and they have a foldable stock, at least it looks like a stock point to me, uh, it's got that same little pull-down thing that looks like you, you can remove the stock, and, uh, it's collapsible, I believe it looks like, so that's kind of a nice touch, I dig it, I like that. I'm always curious to see what Nerf is going to come out with next for the Rival line. They've been doing some interesting and fun things, though lately it just kind of has been bigger is better with the Hades and the Prometheus and whatnot. So it is kind of nice to see scaling back a little bit. Like, yes, we got the Kronos, but scaling back and kind of being 
uh, a little bit different than just the higher capacity every time higher capacity so this is definitely in my mind a nice and welcome change and i look forward to seeing when it releases and what exactly it does when it does release so when we get more information we'll certainly be sharing that with all of you but let's jump ahead to uh what other thing we want to talk about today and that is something from worker worker uh is getting into the, the motor game now we've seen some kits from worker come with motors before but they've never been anything substantial more geared towards like imrs or double a size cell batteries stuff like that these are some beefy motors these are monsters, plain and simple. That's really the only way to put it. Uh, the specs on these, they're 3S motors. They top out at 43,000 RPMs with a 45 amp stall per motor, which is pretty hefty. And they gave us the torque in uh, GCMC, which I assume was supposed to be GCM. Maybe not, I don't, but regardless, when I put those numbers in to transfer to MNM, it uh, is a lot, a lot of torque, if that's right. Probably more torque than we need. Maybe I'm wrong though, maybe I'm looking at these, number, these, these numbers wrong, but it's 1520 GCM on the torque rating, which, that's a lot. That, I think, that, unless, like I said, unless I'm looking at something wrong or, or converting something wrong, that's a ton of torque and potentially more than we actually need. You know I love torque. I love my flywheel spinning up super, super fast, but these seem like overkill in a lot of different ways. Uh, 43,000 RPMs is a bit much, it seems, for most flywheel setups. Now these could be good pusher motors, potentially, if you want a super fast high rate of fire, that could be something good, but that 45 amp stall is nothing to be sneezed at. So it's gonna be putting a lot of pressure on your switches, your wiring, and your motor, or well, the battery for the motor. So this is a tough one for me. Uh, I like seeing progress. I like seeing workers step into more lipo oriented stuff, but uh, this may be a step too far. We'll see once people get them in hand. They are available now for around $24 US per pair. So, I'm curious. I'm looking forward to seeing when someone puts them in a build and see how they do, how they perform in terms of longevity. These are ball bearing motors. I'm sorry, I did not mention that earlier. They are ball bearing motors, which uh, is nice. I do believe they, uh, I don't know if they're neodymium magnets, but they are certainly, they do certainly have some magnets in them. Uh, it, again, with worker products, it's always hard to get the specific exact details because they often are translated. So, uh, if I messed up anything here, I'll put the info down below when I get corrected. So definitely take a look down there for that. But that's something that's that's new from Worker. That's interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see, even if these ones don't get well received, hopefully they go back and they rework and they present another option. So that's just my perspective on it. Uh, I like options, even you know if those options need to be refined before they're good options. So yeah, that, that's my thought. Let me know your thoughts on that. One other thing I want to talk about today before we get into our mod video of the week is Flywheel the World. Now they are going to be partnering up with Make Test Battle to produce Delrin flywheels for the Flywheel the World cages that you've seen in the recon and other blasters that they have been putting together, as well as some things like the uh, Dessert Pigeon from uh, Mr. Heathpants, which is an awesome, fun little blaster. So that is kind of awesome that these uh, flywheels are going to be produced, mass produced, CNC machined uh, out of Delrin, like I said, and they're going to be available in person at Ragnar Oktoberfest in October and ideally around the same time online. We don't know exactly the date they'll be available yet, but that is something that you should look for towards the middle of October. And they're going to be $20 per pair or 18 per pair if you buy 10 pairs or more. This is awesome to me. Um, it's just cool that there's now smaller form factor, form factor flywheels, regular form factor, and we've got some people doing really large form factor flywheels. So it's so cool to me. It's just really cool to me to see all of these, these different formats developing and growing and seeing how they can uh, push uh, what we expect out of Nerf Blasters. So this is something that's very interesting to me and I'm looking forward to their release and seeing what people continue to do with them. 
uh, the, the, the kits are just going to be awesome to have in hand and see, um, like in the dessert pigeon that Mr. Heathpants is doing, which, uh, he's selling kits. Think Sons Guns is selling kits. Some other people are, uh, getting into it with these, these flywheels. It's just cool is really what I, what I want to get to with these. It's just cool that they're available and I'm glad that, uh, they're going to be available much sooner than anticipated. So definitely uh, look out for that. If these are something that interests you, if you want to put some flywheels in a Springer blaster that uh, people may not expect on the field. Surprise, some people have some fun in the process. That brings us to our mod of the week. And this week we're doing it a little bit different. This time it's a mod book of the week. This is the Nerf Blaster Modification Guide by Out of Darts. It is available now from his website, and on October 16th, I believe it'll be available on Amazon.com, and I couldn't not talk about this. It is so cool. I am so excited for Luke that this book is done. It's available. It's going to be shipping next week from Out of Darts' website. Uh, so place your orders now, or if you're like me and you want to wait till you see it in an actual bookstore, uh, you can go out and you can purchase it in person at a bookstore, which is what I want to do. This is so cool that there is going to be a, a paper book version of a mod guide to teach people, whether you're new, whether you're in the hobby for a while. This is something that's awesome. It's, it's just one new way to get people into our hobby and let people know that this exists. You can, you can learn things through this. You can meet people through this. You can have fun through this all these amazing things in regards to our hobby put in a book that people are going to stumble onto and find and go, I didn't know this existed. This is awesome. I have to get into this. And it's just so cool to me. So definitely, if you haven't already looked at it, if you aren't planning on buying one, at least take a look at it. See if it's something you might uh, want to gift someone that may be a little bit curious about Nerf modding or what it is you do for your hobby. This is one way to let them know and share uh, the love of the hobby with them. So definitely go check that out. And for our video of the week, since we're mixing things up a little bit, we did a book instead of an actual mod. Why don't we do a podcast instead of a video? So this week I want to talk about Detroit Dart Talk. This comes to the folks from Detroit, Detroit Dart Club and they wanted to get into the podcast game and they are a couple episodes in. I've been listening and it's nice to have now another podcast focused on Nerf that it's just to me, long form content is something that you can do things you wouldn't otherwise be able to. So a, a format where you have multiple hosts discussing things, uh, you feel like you're kind of there with podcasts, you can listen to the conversation, feel like you're part of it almost, and, and it's just a different kind of enjoyment. So if you want something to listen to while you're on your way to and from work or on a long drive, queue up some podcasts, queue up the Detroit Tart, Dart Talk. Uh, they've they're trying to do something cool and they're trying to grow and continue to improve the way their podcast comes out. So definitely go check that out. I'll have a link down below to their SoundCloud page. Uh, normally I'd have it over here, but I can't actually link that because it's not actually a video. So this is a little bit different. But before we get to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you as always to everyone that supports this channel, whether you like, whether you subscribe, whether you share, just watch videos, comment, support on Patreon, any way you choose to support the channel. Thank you so much for being here and making this channel what it is. Uh, if you think there's something I should know about, I should talk about or share, always leave a comment down below or email me on the email you can find on my YouTube page. I love sharing the things that you all share with me. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.